Hey guy from New Plastic and today we're going to make some fabrics, specifically a jersey knit type fabric, the kind of fabric you see on a plain t-shirt. Check out my new procedural fabric packs, different packs with a total of 159 procedural fabric materials for Octane and Cinema 4D. They look really really good and they're totally customizable and infinitely tileable. I really hate when image based materials show that obvious tile pattern and you need to find ways to break it and it never really works. None of that happens with procedural materials. There are different kinds of packs like knit, weave, fuzzy, apparel, leather and more. Check out the link in the description. Also, if you want an enamel pin with these cool designs I made, I know we're all about 3D here, but they're actual physical enamel pins. Find them on the other Gumroad store, which I'll also link in the description. Beyond that, if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out the Patreon or membership where you'll find all these project files, get free products, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang and follow the channel on Instagram at brandnewplastic. Subscribe, like, comment, bell, call your parents, let's go. Before we start, I just want to make a little point here. If you've seen those tutorials on crazy procedural knit or weave patterns that show you how to use advanced math nodes to create a really detailed and sophisticated actual knit pattern, well, that's not one of those. Unfortunately, Octane for Cinema 4D is just not sophisticated enough to do this. And I've tried, boy, have I tried for literally months. You can get kind of close, but it's not worth the effort. And honestly, unless you zoom all the way in, you don't really need to have that level of sophisticated details. This is more of a suggestion of a knit pattern and not actually knitting anything. So I have this fabric model here with a strong key light from the side, a soft rim light and a subtle HDRI for some ambient light. Okay, let's start from a flat plane so we can see better what we're doing. Set a universal material, change BRDF mode to STD, weird name, which from what I understand is kind of mixing between Beckman and GGX. So it's kind of getting the best out of both worlds. Let's throw in a composite texture and add a bunch of layers, plug it into the albedo, and let's just focus on the first two layers now. I'll start with the Moir Mosaic nodes at the Custom Patterns tab, and also throw in a Marble node into the second layer. Let's bring the details down on the marble so it's more of a rough gradient, and scale it all the way down. Do the same for the Moir node and change the shape to circles. I'm going to shift them by 0.5 so they're offset. Add some blur and let's stretch them on the Y axis by three. Let's mix them to see if they're aligned. And yep, they're aligned and already creating an interesting blend using the difference blend. Let's plug in the third layer and plug a float node. Set the blend mode to subtract. And this kind of creates an interesting blend where it inverts it and then strengthens the blacks underneath. Now we just need to play around with the scale and position of the dots. If I move them up and down, I see which of the patterns that form I like. And again, we're not going for a literal knit pattern, just a suggestion that we'll sell it from a distance. Let's increase the shape size. Squeeze them. Mm, nah, let's keep slowly moving them up. And okay, let's stick to this. This is cool. Let's add a projection node set at distorted UVs. Plug this new noise to translation and just start up the positive value by a tiny, tiny bit, 0 0.001. And this noise is actually way too big, so let's scale it down. And we're starting to slightly break the uniformity of the pattern. Cool. And you see if I increase the float value set to abstract, it tightens up the distance between the shapes. Let's add values, but as negative to the Y range of the distorted UVs. All right, let's add this noise to a UVW transform, which essentially duplicates it. Plug that into the fourth layer. Change the blend to difference. Mm, let's try darken. And let's play with the size and blur of the Moir shape. Okay, another noise into the fifth layer. Change type to chips. Scale way the fuck down. Invert, contrast way up and up the gamma till we get these tiny faint specks all over. Change the blend mode to add. 
And now we just spread them all over the whole pattern we created just to break it up. And we can play with the settings a little until we get something that feels right. Cool, now let's put it on the main fabric model and see actually how it looks like. Let's plug the whole thing to the albedo through a gradient node and use a mix of dark and light colors. I like to use mostly a subtle transition from dark to bright and just have a much darker and much brighter notch clamped all the way at the ends. So you can see only these slivers are darker and only the specks are white and the rest is just kind of a single color. Okay, too shiny. Let's also plug this to the specular channel through a gradient and truly choke the blacks and maybe bring the whites in at just a tad and maybe not fully black, but certainly very dark. You don't really want any real specular highlights in most fabrics, but I do want to have this very, very fine, subtle kind of dust of glint that happens a lot of the times. I think it has to do with the way really tiny pieces of fiber react to light, but I'm not really sure why. Duplicate that gradient and plug the whole thing to the roughness through the gradient, reverse the notches, and use the same one on the bump channel and again reverse the notches and make them black and 50% gray and okay you start to see the pattern if you go to a macro zoom it won't look that good but we're not aiming for that with this method let's scale down the top noise and break it up using the larger noise under it as a mask and now really it's just about fiddling with the details till you're satisfied turn down the bump maybe increasing the blur and the scaling down a bit move the dots around a bit let's play around with the noise detail in the marble node maybe nudge it around a little bit okay let's bring in some sheen and yeah, that definitely adds a little touch. It kind of fakes the way that tiny, tiny fuzz on the surface catches the light at an angle. But let's use one of these gradients and plug the composition through it into the sheen roughness channel. Make it white to medium dark gray. And now the sheen spreads more on those knit rails and spreads less in the crevices. But what if we invert it? That might look cool. And use the bump on the sheen bump as well. Okay, let's scale down the whole texture using the UV length slides so that everything scales down proportionally, including the distorted UV nodes. Honestly, it looks sick. It's really just about experimenting now till we get cool looks. Like, let's rotate the moir dots and that looks really fucking good. Yeah, okay. Let's scale that fuzz noise down and expose it more with the gamma. Maybe it's too exposed now, but I like that we see this minuscule bright flex. Just make it a bit more fuzzy. Maybe choke in the whites on the specular to make them stronger. Or maybe even increase the IOR for that. Mm, that's cool. Let's compare that to before. Yeah, with the IOR set at 2, those really, really pop out. Let's keep it at 2. But scale them down even more. Still looks weird on the extreme macro, but eh, what are you going to do? Let's make the bottom two layers 0.9 opacity so that the white specks stick out more and break that top noise even more by increasing the contrast on the mask. Hmm. Let's scale the mask noise up and maybe up the opacity. Maybe invert the mask so the specs show on the dark areas of the noise underneath it. And we can carefully choke the spec noise a bit more 
that we're really left with faint, faint, tiny specks. Then pull back the color gradient to expose them a bit more. Yeah, this looks great. And from now on, we can really just mess around with the settings to dial in different looks. So you can play around with the more size. Change the marble blend mode to lighten, which can work really well as well. And already we get a slightly different knit pattern. If I scale down the marble by two, that's also really, really cool. It kind of starts to feel like a more sophisticated knit. And to control the marble stripes more in detail, I can add a color correction node and play with the gamma, exposure or contrast, maybe increase the bump strength and increase the UV distortion st strength. Mm, this is kind of cool also, I like this one. Okay, let's add another layer and stack it above layer one. And basically duplicate the moire with a UVW transform. And stretch it on the Y axis. And let's see how it looks with a difference blend mode. And yeah, that's cool. It kind of breaks the pattern a bit. Maybe place it above the marble layer. Mm, okay. Okay, I mean, I think you get the point. I mean, just have fun with it. This one is a bit more rough than the previous one, which I like. And we can even increase the details by adding a vertex dis displacement node, set really low, turn on auto bump, and plug in the marble node, for example. Maybe through a UVW transform and scale it up by two. Hmm, it kind of breaks it. I think there's too much detail in the marble. So let's bring down the details on it to make it kind of smoother. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it just pops all the knit out a bit. We're kind of getting some faceting here. So just be aware of it. Maybe tone it down even more because we don't really need a lot of height or just add an octane tag to it with subdivisions turn higher. And lastly, just for a little extra touch, let's add a mix node, plug the color gradient to two different color correction nodes, plug them into the two textures and mix them using noise. Stretch the noise on the x-axis and let's make one of the correction nodes darker and the other brighter. And maybe we can even add another noise and plug it into the power of the first one just to add more detail. And now we're getting this heather type color pattern very easily. Here we can scale the whole texture down. And yeah, that looks pretty damn good. And I actually ended up scaling the marble that's attached to the displacement by four and not by two. I made the UV distortion like three times stronger. I changed the top noise to circular and changed the blend mode to lighten. And I pulled the specular gradient notches slightly to the left, keeping everything extremely low specular, but revealing a bit more of those tiny specks. But yeah, I really, really love how this came out. Looks really good. There's so much nice detail in it. Yeah, that's it for this one. Next one, we'll look into how to create weave patterns, and I'll probably just kind of explore this whole procedural fabric material concept for the next few tutorials. Feel free to check out the procedural fabric packs on my Gumroad. Check out the enamel pins. Consider supporting on Patreon. And big up to all the massive them, Yiningong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, 
Hodder, Leo, Heather Rodiger, Yanji Shin, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Ferong Ferong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Vico Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Renche, Tell Me More, Jaskirat Pendrath, Bori, Jin Kwan Wu, Eric Lofton, Bruno Arredondo, 3D Monkey Biz, Arlen, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desale, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, Studi Image, Matus Jadrzejewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Cragen, Joshua Akoy, Punksukornim Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie DeGueldre, Choyun Jun, NZE, IMN, Golfino666, Ali Asser, Leandro Merriman, May, Balgasm, Shane, Harry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oyson O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Faux Major, Kevin E. Quintero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Javola Tong, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, George, Alex Jean Yongcho, Mate Sarkozy, Tequila Bedoya, Onur Koroglu, Takeyuki Chiba, Pablo Ritter, Sophia Wilton, Dave Hughes, Ramshad, Nick Davis, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.